ice will melt, water will boil, you and I can shake off this mortal call, it's bigger than us. You don't have to worry about it. Ready or not, here comes a drop. You know you feel lucky when you know where you are. It's gonna come true. Here in your arms I remember. Easy when you don't try. Going on first impressions, man in a cage has made his confession. Now you've seen me at my worst, and it won't be the last time that I'm down there. It's only natural, I should want to be there with you. It's only natural. Can I help it if I want to? Just thought I'd get my copy strike, copy, copyright strike in. Good evening. Good evening, me. So, I have something to say. And having just watched a few YouTubers seem to be in accordance with others as well in that, um, you know, things are really getting close. Now, people might be sick of hearing that. And I don't personally stick to one date. I'm pre-rapture, mid-rapture, post-rapture. It's happening to people individually. And it's been happening before the trib, mid the trib, and after, and it will continue to carry on happening. But, I um, had a dream a couple of nights ago, and um, it puzzled me. I wondered what it was about. But it felt significant. Um, it was pretty vivid, it was pretty real. And it involved animals. And there were other people there that, I was, that, that were there. But they don't stick out. It was mainly the animals that stuck out. Now I've had a dream before where there was this sort of lion. Even though it didn't look like a lion, but in the dream it was a lion. <laughs> it looked more like a cross between a tiger and a leopard. But it... Anyway, so big cats, big scary cat, right? Now, in that dream, I remembered, hang on, all animals God shouldn't be afraid, right? And I, I was about to run away and I stopped. And as soon as I did that, the lion changed and, and was no longer wary itself. It was, it was suddenly a bit more relaxed and then... Me and the lion made friends, and in the rest of the dream, the lion was around being cool and everything. But in this dream, and I and what I what the animals that were in this dream were were, were bears. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I'm thinking I was trying to remember in the morning were they bears, like, or or could they have been gorillas? But I'm pretty sure they were bears. And in this dream, they weren't just. They were always like about three bears together and it seemed like there were just bears, bears everywhere. And in the dream we were sort of making our ways around and, 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 and there were bears. And it was like, it was like if you had a town and you had the outskirts of the town and then you had the, uh, the woods or whatever, right? And it was like they were just in the edge of the woods and but they had been coming closer and it was almost like the whole place was surrounded and you know just there in the brush on the edge were the bears you got it Hello. yeah have you got it yeah yeah, yeah. all right oh, in, a bit. in a bit sorry about that um 
And so the next day I was sort of trying to think, you know, what what this dream was. And and I had two possibilities. And one was that, you know, the bears were uh, the enemy and they were, I'm surrounded, like, you know, it's my life or whatever, and I'm surrounded by the enemy and, you know, they're about to pounce and everything. And the other, the other part of me thought, know that it's God, you know, God's plan and like it's coming to fruition, it's just there right in the edge, it's about to, you know, and there's no escape in it and everything. And I've, I've gone with the latter. Now what confused me is the fact that I thought why in the dream then could I not, because I remember being near the bears and not necessarily running away but I was scared. I didn't want to engage with them, and they weren't engaging with me either. They weren't like looking at me or anything. So this is kind of what made me wonder and think about it is, you know, because I, I wanted to think that, you know, it was God's plan version. But, I you know, I wanted to be realistic as well. And, I, you know, the way things have been looking in the world when you just listen to the crap on the mass media is that, you know, Things aren't good, that's how they're making it feel. So anyway, but, I will, sorry, I'm a bit tired. I would say that um, it is ready, God is there, ready. And what I've noticed as well, which made me, like, if you think I sat with it for a bit, and I was, because it's been a couple of days, how it sort of played out, is um, it seems like God's getting more serious. Uh, you know, sort of, you, you, you stray the line, you, you do a bit of a sin or whatever, you go wrong, um, the, 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 the re results of that are now more intense and quicker and stronger. It's like a stronger message. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, because stuff that's happened with my son and and, and me in my car and I'm, I'm not going to go into it all because it's just a bit too wordy to be honest I feel and I don't really know why I'm making a video and I don't I'm hot <laughs> and uh because I've got I feel like I've got stuff to say, and I don't want to, you know, I'd rather not leave stuff unsaid. Like, I don't want to repeat myself either. So what do I want to say? So I had a dream. There's some bears in it. <laughs> Three bears. I mean, that's big business. I mean, you're not messing about. But obviously, anyone who has a dream, it's it's there, there, it's for them to interpret because the meanings for them, it's the the message is for them. Well, so I should bring some uh, sacredness into this room. Jesus. That's better. That's what we need. And probably shouldn't have this. I mean, I do think you know, in a, in, a, in a sense that all earthly things are becoming sort of a bit more wrong in a sense and. I think just, you know, if if there are things, earthly things that you like, you know, with chocolate, sugar, whatever, tea, food, <laughs> right? And if you can imagine that, you know, they were all gone, you know, you were in the wilderness and there was nothing of that. 
and all you had was just your faith that God would take care of you and give you what you need. You know, how does that sit? Do you still want to live? <laughs> I went pretty deep yesterday. I was so deep, I was into the infinity stuff. <laughs> and I've got to keep reminding myself that, you know, whether you're feeling it or thinking it, you only know what you know. How many things are unknown? There's so many unknown unknowns. Well, you wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> um, but, so in a sense, I was, I was getting into that thing of infinity and, oh, when did it all start? You know, sort of, was there this point when there was nothingness and, and then there was this tiny little speck of love and love grew. And, you know, even to have nothingness, is that something? Is nothingness something? And then, you know, it's been going for longer than anybody knows. And um, you know, I, when I first when I first felt like I felt God, or when I did, September 2014, and then a couple of sessions, like four weeks later, I was there feeling God, and it felt so strong, so powerful, you know, and I almost felt like I was the only one in existence, the only thing that existed, it was all me, you know. You can get, some people get to that feeling, you know, everything is just for me and that's all there is. And if you think that, you know, everything is made of love and love is the only substance and, you know, it all keeps growing and everything. But, you know, how does love feel about that? And that's where I think the symbiotic relationship comes in because love needs us. And we are containers of love, that's what we are, a container. But we must have been made from love. But like, love needs us to have experiences. And at some point, we all have to... Like, before I said, choose to love. But I got, I've been in a situation before where I thought... You know, I could, I could have the power to cease all of existence. Like, because you get, if you think about infinity and how it might have begun, trillions and billions and billions and zillions and zillions and zillions and zillions, and zillions of light years ago, Then you kind of imagine, you know, it's progression. It's getting bigger and 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 bigger. Until what? And and then if you think of yourself as one of those entities that's gonna, you know, come into the tree of life and and be part of it, and we're gonna go on and on and on and on, learning and having more experiences and everything else, and you know, you do think. Is there going to be a point when we say, oh, we'll do a reset? You know, that really wouldn't be fair, would it? You know, and what is the difference between this time, you know, this time of a children of a, a super soul becoming awakened and aware of what they are, and then going on to do their own thing 
compared to the last time it happened. You know, and is there enough interest to keep it going? <laughs> That's when I remind myself, you know, you if this is the real truth, you're still pretty much an infant. So, you know, surely there's, you're going to learn so much more, you know, that then you're going to be able to get it. But, it, you know, it can be a real head case. But all that stems from an assumption. <laughs> an assumption that there must have been a beginning. And perhaps it's just not the understanding of... Well, basically it is, isn't it? Lack of understanding. And then you just get round to the point where like, well, we are here. <laughs> we do exist. And surely now would not be the time for a reset when, you know, we're just on the verge of an awakening. That wouldn't really be the time to do a reset. But during meditation, you know, thoughts and feelings, and you just got, you got to go with them. Like, I really think I fucked up my mate a bit. And all I just, you know, we'd been having a chat, so he was, in, he was on the right level, and, and I kind of put that question to him. Could there ever be nothingness? Is it possible that there could be nothing? And uh, kind of put him off a bit, <laughs> which was maybe wrong thing to do, but who knows when it's the wrong or the right thing. Just kind of got, <laughs> for fuck's sake, what am I doing? I tell you, it's been one of them days. It's been one of them days. Oh, I like... I must like my... So they're clean as well, do you know what I mean? Put them on today. But I have the smell of coffee in them for the next few days, why not? In fact, next week. No, it has. I mean, like this morning, my plan, I had a couple of computer calls to do. I'd fixed the car, I was still chuffed that I'd managed to fix the car and been done for quite a few days, used it quite a few times, thought probably gonna hold out. You know, I bodged it, but I bodged it. And fix the end of the clutch cable because that had snapped off and without replacing the whole cable I managed to drill a hole, put a bolt in and very fiddly work took a whole day, <laughs> hooked it back on. It worked better than it ever had. But um, it's broken at the moment and so yeah, thought I had these couple of calls and get a phone call from school. My son, who you know, had a dodgy year last year at school, but was making improvements and started this year brilliantly. Got a phone call, he's punched a window and he's smashed it and he's cut all his hand and you're going to have to take him to A&E or something, right? So I get over there, drive over there, fine, car's working. <coughs> see my son, see his cut, find out the story, you know, it's really weak glass or something, but proper dangerous shattering glass and you know he he's just banging the window because someone had given him a negative mark for no reason he was frustrated and he was expecting it to be as strong as the other windows in the school which he punches occasionally and he just wanted to make a noise you know um, but these were outdoor mobile classrooms and it probably like shed glass and I don't know Broke too easily. Um, so I still had these computer calls, and I'm not the type of person who likes to go in Q and A and E for six hours. Plus, I think if you've got a deep cut, you probably want to avoid 
superbugs like MRSA, which, you know, pre pre predominantly in and around the hospitals. So my evaluation is that is um, probably shouldn't go, but I let him decide. He was okay with it. Uh, so I drive to this customer, just about turn up at this customer's, and boom, clutch snaps. Ah, crying out loud, gone wrong. Okay, right. I ran in with the customer's laptop, say, sorry, I've got to go. My son, I just picked up my son from school, his hands all cut up, and uh, my car's just <laughs> broke, so I've got to get back. Um, and there's a way you can drive with the without a clutch, it's a bit dodgy, you can get stuck on a hill, I say, as long as we don't get stuck on a hill, we're all right. We could exit in this village, driving up this really steep hill, which we're going to have to go over one steep hill, so might as well try and get away with it. Uh, lo and behold, can't have to stop at the end of the hill, there's a car behind me, <laughs> I'm waving around, I've got to try and start the car in first gear, vroom, vroom, like that, but it isn't going to happen up a hill. So then I have to sort of roll in reverse and there's luckily there's a gate I could get sideways and get flat enough to start again, try again, phew, get home, son thinks I'm a hero, that's good. <laughs> so we get home, get the car back, fine, we're alright. And uh, his uh, hand needs sorting out, so we have a, we have a look, unwrap it, oh, oh dear, he's still got a bit of glass in one of his knuckles. And it's causing him pain every time he moves it, but I managed to get that out. He doesn't think there's any glass in the cut, so uh, we wrap that up again. Then I go to the pharmacist, get some more plasters and that. And then a bit later, have a look at it again. Let's soak it, let's wash it. Uh, there's a bit of skin that's tucked in, and I just really want to take it out because I know it would heal better if we could just flick that back out, it'd heal quicker, but you know, fair enough, do you know what I mean? He doesn't want to touch it, but he's pretty sure there's no glass in there, we'll keep an eye on it, obviously, if we see any signs of pus, then we know then there's something not quite right, but hopefully it should scab up in a few days, a couple of days, and uh, yeah, and it will be a scar and a reminder to him and a lesson, you know, and that's what I said to him, I said, you know, this is God showing you that you can't solve problems by punching walls, you know, it might make you feel a bit better and and we talked about anger and stuff and and it does seem, you know, a lot of his anger is justified and it probably is better to vent it sometimes than hold it all in. Are you coming in? I'm just chatting about you. Just chatting about me? Yeah. What are you saying? Don't swear. I was just saying but about what happened today. Oh, yeah, Show yeah. me hand. As if there's anyone there watching anyway. <laughs> and I was just saying how you know how God how God is sort of teaching you that you can't solve your problems by punching things. Nah, you you can. As long as you don't as long as you don't punch a window, then you can punch but, stuff. You know, what's yeah. a twelve year old know? He's got a lot to learn, hasn't he? So, um, and that's why I think, you know, then linking with my dream, sort of how, you know, the bears are strong, it's more serious. Yeah, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. I don't care, G. Um, so, and that they're right there on the edge now, so it feels like, you know, things getting more serious, like God's getting more serious, is like, you know, there's been warnings, 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 and, um, do you know what I mean? Start heeding the warnings, or the, uh, uh, repercussions getting more serious. And I just, I don't know the reasons yet what was going on with the car, but I, I know there'll be reasons for it, you know, it's sort of, it's all, you know, we are being guided and taught. You know, and that's why I can have these wacky mental thoughts about infinity and existence and in the end I can just come back and feel the love of God and think, well, God's, you know, God's obviously okay with it because <laughs> it's carried on and, oh, yeah, and sorry, and then the thought that we're going to have to do that one day. We're going to have to bring a big... A 
hundred billion souls into awareness of their existence. So is it a choose to love? What was it I thought the other day? That it wasn't so much choose to love. Is it? To be, because the to be or not to be, that is the question. Really fit. To be or not to be, that is the question. It is the question. Are you gonna love? Are you gonna choose to love? Choose to be? Are you gonna be? Or are you not gonna be? <laughs> You're gonna be, aren't you? Uh, I was just listening to, um, what's his name? Justin Thomas? I don't know now. He's the guy, black guy, who's linked with the three girls, Crystal, Christine and Pearl, with the whole rapture thing. He's just done a video talking about the shepherd, the boy who cried wolf. And... And it's given me a new perspective on that story. In fact, there's two, you know, I think it's being told wrong. Like, it's been changed into the boys playing a prank and then on the third time it's real and no one believes him and that's the moral of the story is don't do pranks, right? So I think originally it, was going, it went more like this. The boy, the shepherd, herding the sheep senses, feels, thinks, wolves are coming. He goes and tells me, wolves are coming. They're like, have you seen a wolf? No, but I know a wolf's coming. The wolves are coming. Oh, shut up. Don't be so stupid. <laughs> you know, ridicule, laugh. Second time, does it again, you know, and now they're telling him, no, no, there no wolves, just be stupid. If you see a wolf, tell us. Right. I don't know. Something <laughs> like that. It's like, you know, did he know they were coming? And then on the third time, when he says, look, the wolves are coming, I can see them, I can see them. You know, they just got bored of him and they didn't believe him or whatever. Ends up the werewolves. So is that how the story should have gone? And it's the moral of the story is, you know, when the boy says the wolves are coming, the wolves are coming because the wolves did come. And and if people have been saying shit's coming down and even though we've said it and it hasn't quite happened yet shit's coming down. And these bears they they didn't seem like they were mucking about. They weren't gonna muck about. I just stir my coffee as if I'm throw it over myself again. Um, might as well just sit here for a bit. Bring a bit more presence of sacred presence. Sanctify the room. Jesus. You know, I could be the Antichrist. I mean, and the Bible's messed up a bit, but I just saw someone doing a video and they say, you know, the, the Antichrist is the one who doesn't believe in the Father and the Son or doesn't believe God came in the flesh. I could believe that God spiritually entered Yeshua's flesh, but I don't believe that the Christ was God in the flesh. Absolutely, I don't believe that. And I have, I have, like, looked back on it again, thinking, you know, because I come up with this seven Christs thing, and that me being the seventh. So I have looked back and think, you know, have I got that 
totally wrong and was that one 2000 years ago like the main one and that was it and but no because it, he himself says you know you will do more than I've done so it's not you know I mean, you can use bits of the Bible and say whatever you like. And I can't quite get over this thing with the, the description of the Antichrist in the uh, Revelations. I don't know. There's just, I keep thinking there's something switched. I feel like things have been switched around, so like the descriptions have been switched around so that people will think the Antichrist sounds like the good one and the good one sounds like the anti one or something but every time I sort of go to read it and see then it doesn't I can't find it I can't find it and I think really could I be the Antichrist I mean fucking I'm a born again virgin. I mean, you could just take some things with me. Oh, you know, he smokes and he says this and that. Yeah, he could be the end. And I look a bit like GMS Israelites who have their picture of Esau, and it kind of does look like me. Except I haven't got the horns. Um. But I know I'm not. I mean, I might not be perfect. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. I don't even think our mother and father is perfect. Because that would suggest that they're not going to learn anymore. And I don't know if that can be right. Um, love is perfect. Love is perfect. And it's apparently it's the unforgivable sin to talk against the Holy Spirit. And I would, I think of that as love, I think. I think they must be. Love itself. How could you talk against that? How could you? Is it even possible? I wouldn't even want to try. But is it even possible? If a sin is unforgivable, then I would say it's also an impossible thing to do. Because to really do it, you'd have to really mean it. And nobody could really mean it. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway. You know. So the other thought with that bear dream, I did wonder if, you know, if it's uh, civilization now going to be bringing in a tighter rein over the people. And we see signs of it in China, how people are getting, you know, they get points for good behaviour and minus points for bad behaviour. So you could write a tweet praising the government and that will get you bonus points. It's, it's not right, is it? <laughs> I mean, I want to live in a world where people say what they really think and what they really mean. Because only the only way we can improve ourselves is by exposing our weaknesses. If you hide everything, if you fake everything, it's not good. And um, Elon Musk wants to connect computer to the brain. No thanks. I don't want to be a cyborg at all. Not one jot. Not one bit. I could live without my phone. Not a problem. I'd get over this too. If it wasn't there, if I didn't know where to get it, do you know what I mean? Within a few days I'd be over it. 
probably feel quite good. But then that's what I think, you see, then I think, well, why do anything? You know, we are here on the earth, so if there's a fruit to taste, taste it. I don't know if you don't try. That song I sang at the beginning, I mixed loads of the verses up and missed bits out, but it's got some really good lines in it. Can't shake off this mortal coil. It's bigger than us. We don't even have to try. It's always balance. I mean, I give up sometimes and I endure sometimes. How do you know when you should be giving up and when you should be enduring? Because sometimes giving up has paid off and sometimes enduring has paid off. Sometimes enduring hasn't paid off and sometimes giving up hasn't paid off. So much balance and so many you're no good on your own. You're no good isolated on your own with nothing but you. There's nothing going on. But without you possibly being aware of it, you're always, you're always not alone. You've got love with your best friend. You've got your other half. And you've got your parent, your maker. And if my theory is correct, in about 10 billion years, we'll also have beings that we made. So then there'll be that, right? <laughs> But then even they just think, okay, 10 billion, even a million years. Think about, I mean, how many lives in a million years? But I'm, I must still be opening bits up. I've noticed, I mean, it's happened quite a few times during meditation, but it's happened quite a lot lately. Well, I say quite a lot, like maybe a couple of times a week is actually quite a lot. But that... I hear bone, bone clicks, <laughs> like so I've, and it's often after I've just felt a, a louder feeling and it's worked, you know, it's been a new feeling and new feelings are always peculiar before you felt them and they feel weird or odd, and, but you feel them and I'm not really sure what it was that you did or whatever, but it feels good so I'm carry on doing it. And like a, I just hear this, like, or something, and, you know, feels good. So there's nothing I could ever do on purpose, and I'm, I haven't moved, apart from breathing, and sitting like this. But so it's doing something, like, so I do feel like it's, what I've been doing the last few years is, changing my physical body to enable the connection with the soul and this is undoing the gradual damage that everybody goes through particularly in the western world as we grow up so that you know, and in future lives, so like if this is the first sort of 2019 is the first, well not 2019, but 2000s, is when a, when a, when a breakthrough is occurring, that the, the masses are becoming awakened. And, you know, they thought it might happen in 1900, they thought it might happen in 1800, they thought it might happen in 
600. They thought it might happen in 70 AD. It could be another. <laughs> it could be another thousand years. No, but I think I think we're at this tipping point, we're at this breaking point where. See, I can imagine in the early or the late 1800s, and oh, I might get into previous lives, and I can imagine being in the situation I'm now, where I sort of have the knowledge and understanding that, you know, there are people who want to control the media for their own means and stuff like that, but that... I could see that it was absolutely futile to to be able to do anything about it. It was sort of untouchable. There was no way there was no way you could convince the people that anything like this was going on. And I think even a few years back, say 10 years back maybe, I don't know that you know, it was still a bit like that. It was still a bit like you're never gonna convince people that this is reality. And I think that has changed. I think people are waking up and that's making the difference. And we've hit that tipping point where the the bad side just they probably run out of things they can do, you know? I mean they've fucking done everything. But, you know, there's, the deception is still face, glaring us in the face. So, got to stay vigilant, definitely. But God's right there. Right there. And I'm getting a confirmation of that right now from Father. I, I call them Father Jesus and Mother Jesus, or Jesus Mother and Jesus Father. They are one, though. They are Jesus. It was Yeshua who revealed that. And they were healing with the power of that name. It was obviously a new name then. That sound. No one had heard that sound. They didn't even have a letter. Was that was that sounding reckon? Jesus. J. J. How we can't write that down? We haven't got a letter for that. <coughs> <coughs> and then basically almost everything in the Bible now begins with J. And I think it's quite possible, and I've, I think this is why I did a read-through of John, and it didn't really seem to pan out. So, again, is where I, <laughs> I have these feelings about Scripture, how it should be. It's like, if Yeshua was saying, if Yeshua was telling them, you know, there's this name, there's power in it, you can heal it. Look, Jesus, Jesus, expel those spirits in the name of Jesus, and it works. Get up and walk in the name of Jesus. And it works. Jesus, that was the power of your name that he refers to as well. I mean, he's saying protect them by the power of your name. So he knows he's got a name and they're using it. So he would, might be saying quite often and talking to his disciples. And then he's like, hang on. Jesus says, da 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 da. Is channeling or channeling from mother, and he actually apparently the original Lord's Prayer says, uh, Not our father, but our bertha. Our bertha means parent, like not being specific to gender because it's both the mother and the father. That's why Elohim is plural because it's two, it's mother and father. 
got sidetracked there. Anyway, so I was just saying, let's bring in some sacred sanctity into this room and this video. Just by saying Jesus and knowing that's your mother and father creator, your guide, your teacher. Yes, who's nurtured you since your beginning. Yeah, right. When we began. And if my theory is right, and that was about four billion years ago. How tiny were we? Right? We must have been like this big when we began. Like nothing, like just one thing of love in us. Like this core of whatever. It had a character though. But it was still, it must have started off so small. So no wonder we wouldn't have a sort of an idea of it now, like, remember, oh yeah, I remember being born as a soul. <laughs> you know what I mean? We wouldn't, would we? And in many ways, this life is like a, a mirror image of our true life. You know, because as, again, as a baby, what recollections do we have? We, you know, we wouldn't have, our senses weren't awoke and our eyes weren't fully operational and all that sort of stuff. But we've had all those experiences and that's why we find certain things so normal to eat. It's so normal. Put something in your mouth and chew, you know, that it's just so instinctive and normal. We've, we've been doing it for eons. And so yeah, the past lives thing is coming up. Um, You're a soul has done a video on this and it seems to be becoming popular with the people who are talking about the time travel possibilities. And uh, Eurosol put it really well, sort of saying, well, you know, ungrounded people are much more likely to believe in some sort of technological explanation for things. So what we're looking at is people who look, like you take a picture of Eddie Murphy now and then there's this old black and white picture and it looks just like Eddie Murphy, you know. So they're sort of saying, oh, it's, these people are time travellers and they've got one for a few other people. Michael Jackson, but after his plastic surgery, so I don't get that. Um, <laughs> Boris Johnson was Nero, apparently. So, you know, they're, they're, that's what's popular is the, is the time travel potential of that, that these people are time travellers. It's quite funny. But for the past lives thing, you know, would you, in each of your previous lives, would there be something in your face that makes you recognisable again? Now, obviously, would it have to be reasonably limited? I mean, were animals once, wouldn't have had the same face. But there might be characteristics which continue. And I kind of think that would be quite likely and in fact I was I was thinking this well I wasn't thinking exactly that but a few weeks ago because I was getting this strong feeling that I'd had a previous life in uh, it's not recording. had a previous life in in America in like either the early 1900s or late 1800s because I sort of I got I really got this strong feeling when watching this film and you're seeing out the window and you're seeing the other buildings and, you know, some lights are on or some are off or whatever. And I just got this real strong sense that I had quite possibly been a journalist or something like that working for a paper. You know, I got into my head, the, I, I think the Herald or... The Washington Post, I can't even remember now, one of them, I felt like I was being led to look and see who was the editor and I thought, well, you know, may well not have been the editor, but maybe I'd remember the editor, you know, if I worked for that paper. Anyway, I was checking out this one guy, and I thought, you know, maybe I was looking in his eyes and thinking, oh, no, it's possible, maybe I was him, like... And it said who he's married to, and I looked who he's married to, and as soon as I saw the picture, I thought, that looks 
just like my soulmate. And looking at the picture again after thinking, well, you know, could be, could be, you know, maybe not so close. Like, but it was the first impression, and well, maybe I was looking for it. But anyway, it's very unlikely that I, that's the way I'm gonna find who I was, and God knows. Um, but what I think is that I think it is quite possible that there is. There is almost a, a bit of a hierarchy going on. So someone's saying that Boris Johnson was Nero, okay? So 2,000 years ago, Nero was Caesar of Rome. He was like God on earth, right? He's the leader. Now, <coughs> you know, what sort of life... That's quite a hard life, isn't it? I think having a lot of responsibility, being up there, is actually quite a hard life. I don't think it's the, you know, I mean, if you're a corrupt wanker, maybe it isn't. But, you know, if you're, if you're someone who takes this position seriously and everything else, you know, it's probably, it can be an easy life, you know, just a simple life can be an easy life. Oh, I don't have to think too much. I just do what I'm told. It's an easy life. I'm happy with it. Da, 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 da. So I do kind of think, you know, because if we've made this transition over the last million years or so into more advanced beings, there were a few at the beginning and now there are many more. So those first ones, the Adam and Eve or whatever, right, must have been at that time like the children of God who are doing almost the best at that time. And this probably goes in waves. Remember, we're talking in billion years, it'll all be upside down and different. So there's no sort of permanent, or oh, these are the best children of God and these are the worst children of God. We're just all different. But in each particular time, you've got some who are doing, like, doing well with this particular part of our process and those who are a bit behind, right? And that's going to change, and the first will be last, and last will be first, blah, 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 blah. So if someone who was Nero back 2,000 years ago, then it's likely, yeah, that they would be in a position of power. Get sent to Eton as a boy, and, you know, they took that life. And I'd like to think that if Nero, if Boris was Nero in a previous life, that in his life now as Boris... He's uh, going to redeem some of the things known to have not been very good. And maybe all the lives that he's had in between, maybe he's had some real simple lives. Like, you know, after that Nero one, I really don't want any more responsibility, <laughs> thanks, for a while. But maybe now he was ready for it. And so I don't know. And obviously I probably shouldn't be concentrating on... on other people's previous lives, I should be trying to lock into mine. Oh, I'll tell you what happened yesterday. I know I'm just rambling and going from one to the other, that's how, how I roll usually. Um, yesterday, I think, on well, the day before, yesterday, I think, I got a real sense of being, I reckon, between one and two years old. And the strong sense that I got was how loved and appreciated I was by my family. You know, my parents, grandparents, you know what I mean? I had, I would, I, there's just this feeling of, wow, I am really, I'm really welcomed here. I mean, people really like me, you know? I. That was there then. And obviously that <laughs> fades, doesn't it? Probably after you're three. <laughs> Mostly gone, they just about to cling on to it. But, you know, so that was, you know, as a, as a being a very young child, that's, that's a really nice boost. You know, no wonder you, you feel that loved. You're going to return that love, you know, it's... Uh, of course you're going to love your parents so much when you feel that loved. 
So that was quite interesting. So when I get so when I get a feeling like that, right? And I just know, okay, I don't know the date or anything. But I might get a sense of weather and it seems sunny. So, but you know, an age range oh, about one or two. Now, sometimes I've had senses and I thought, I know that is before this life. That doesn't come from this life. It comes from before. Um, and I know when, you know, was it 2015, when I th had my thing where I felt like I was being told, like, you are you were Enoch. And I went through this sort of, as it was happening, the feeling was coming and I could have run away. That was, The way the feeling was coming, I thought, I kind of want to run away from this. But I didn't, I stayed in it and it sort of brought me back, 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 long time. So like there was a big gap. And I, then I had the, this feeling that I was the Enoch. And so then I took, afterwards I took that, because I wasn't really believing in reincarnation then. I, I, I'd gone away from it reincarnation idea for a bit thinking oh we're all new souls like that kind of let me off the hook a bit with things I felt like no wonder we don't know anything it's, we wouldn't would we if we're new souls but I, I've left that behind now um, we're four billion years old souls so you know I think so in a sense that was that was me not seeing all those lives in between to, in a sense, still get this understanding about me being Enoch without rupturing my whole sort of belief system at that time. And then that made me just think, oh, that makes me special then, because I have had a previous life. And da -da -da. All you plebeians out there who haven't had previous lives. Ha, oh, dear, what were you last time, a frog? Ha! Oh. <laughs> how long? It's not telling me how long it's been. This is probably be one of these when it breaks. And you know, I'll have been talking to the camera all this time for nothing. Probably am anyway. But you never know, this could be the last message. Before the society, civilization. Oh, that's what I wanted to say about civilization. See, I, I do think of so many things. I think I should say that. Well, I'm not going to write them down. Civilization. When did civilization start? We must have been hunting animals. We were. You know, come on. We come from being animals. Do you know what I mean? I think the hunting thrill has been something that we've liked. But, you know, I suppose you've got to remember there's going to be a recipient of that. And perhaps that's not the ideal for the future, but it's something we're in learning process and you know, we've been hunting for a long time. Millions of years, millions and millions. Um, hundreds of millions of years. So there's a hunting thrill. And there's probably a bit of a prey thrill. I mean, it keeps you keeps you on your tools, doesn't it? But, um, civilization. So, rather than uh, have to run around in the jungle and try and spear a pig and it's all... You know, masses of excitement and stress and everything else and <laughs> right so that's not civilized but taking the young of an animal letting it grow up around you and be used to you and then nicely and calmly when the time is right or you when they feel the time's right to eat that animal kill it nicely and doesn't know. So uh, that's civilised. But that doesn't mean we can't go one step further and just 
leave the animals alone and eat fruit from the tree because that is also civilized. Yeah. So we don't want a breakdown in civilization, but we want civilization to evolve and become even more civilized. So yeah, I don't particularly want to go back to hunting. If we talk about the retrograde step of living in nature, right, it's not a retrograde step. If we live with nature, in balance with nature, not fighting nature, not seeing nature as the enemy, trusting that God is there and will provide you with what you need. That's, that's where we're going. So yeah, your rapture, your harpazo, your being caught up by God so that you're interested in God, so that you want to know more about God and you want to share with other people about God, rapture, being caught up, will happen to you when you least expect it. Or at least that's what it says in the Bible. But God's guiding you. So when you have that awakening, it will be when you're ready. Which I guess only God knows. Jesus, our mother and father. No doubt, we'll be going into 2020. So, for a few years, I've been saying, come on, we've, we've had the tribulation, you know, what about the people in Syria? Surely, you know, we've had like knife attacks on the streets in Europe and earthquakes and animal deaths and surely that's tribulation. So this must be the final battle, the final, the final showdown. And so if it started at the very end of 2012 the old Maya stuff and then it will end seven years later and you know Brexit was a big thing, and it was in the right in the middle of tribulation. And I, a year before, I predicted something's going to happen, May or June, two thousand sixteen. It's going to happen. The big earthquake. That's what I saw it as. <coughs> and coming up in March two thousand sixteen, God sort of made me make a warning video for like California that shit was going down. And then I still had the 
thing about May, June, and I was like, it was going to be on the 22nd or the 23rd on one of those months. And as it got a bit nearer, I was feeling, no, it's June, 22nd or 23rd. So over a month before, made a video saying that. And then we got closer to that time and it didn't seem like anything was going on and I was saying to myself, well, if nothing happens then I know I'm wrong about these feelings that I'm getting and I must rethink what's going on. And uh, on the 23rd we had this vote and you know, I thought, this is worth voting, this is democracy, this is definitely worth getting off my arse. Because I, had, I hadn't been listening to the... I'd turned the news off at that point. I didn't want to hear more and more about this referendum. That, you know, everyone was backing Remain, all the major people, and everyone saying, you've got to remain, you know. We just, no one thought we were going to vote leave. Voted on the 23rd. Went to bed before the results because I think I heard a couple of the initial results and just thought, oh yeah, yeah no, it's not going to be anything interesting here. Friday morning, the 24th. Dropped my son off at school. And come back in the car and stick the radio on. I voted to leave. And uh, I just thought, wow. Is that it? That's not, that's not a big earthquake, is it? But then they were talking about it. And, and on the news and saying the seismic proportions. They were referring to it as an earthquake. And... The few months before, when I'd been warning about a big earthquake in California, and Trump was there, gaining supporters in California. And what an earthquake he's caused. And did he get in partly? You know, did the Brexit leave vote help people think, you know, democracy can change things? Let's give him a go. And hasn't Brexit been a... It's been a real earthquake with seismic ripples just going on and on. And um, it's certainly been something. And I was... Come on, I predicted it a year before to one or two months. A thing that no one thought was going to happen. No one thought it was going to be a big deal. But it's a big deal. And we're not, we're not home yet. We're not out yet. And it's nearly been three and a half years. And as we know, three and a half years is a significant time period. It is time, times, and half a time. It is 42 months. It is... 2,000 and whatever, 100 many days that gets referred to in Daniel as well. Three and a half years. And that would get reached on December the 22nd, 2019. So I say, all the parts are in their places and all of that stuff you could say players are in their places and things are really 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 happening they are happening aren't they i mean just i know we become apathetic about things that are going on in the world but we are so on the brink so on the brink but we just can't really be sure of any of it because it's just such a muddle it's chaos it is chaos and yes we know don't we I think that's God's favourite God's favourite is chaos maybe this is how we're going to do it 
Have chaos. Find order. Bring in a new order, isn't it? To go from one order to another order. You have some chaos in between. Right, well, I think that's going to be long enough, and I don't even know if it is recording, because usually it shows me the time. It's just saying record. So I'll assume it is, and I'll stop it. Okay, ciao for now.